everybody, and welcome to Paranormal Nation Radio. Not so normal. I'm not the only one hearing that, am I? What are you hearing? Trial. That, that. Denise, is that you? Trial. Yeah. Nope. That was weird. Yeah, try. It sounds like she. It's saying trial, trial. Yeah. Well, she kept trying to talk, and we couldn't hear her, and it was mumbling through there. Yeah, I mean that's just part of doing a live show, folks. And yeah, who's commenting. Hello, Jeremy. Oh. How are you feeling, brother? Hopefully, he's doing a lot better. I and... it, this side likes to pop. This side doesn't. This is the side that I need to pop. I lay down on my couch after I got home from work. I put my food in the microwave and I put my hands into my hips and I pushed and I could feel my whole spine just oh it felt terrible. It was it was needed. It felt great when it was done, but the act of it happening was like, oh god, I'm paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah, I tried popping mine and if it pops, it sounds like a AK forty seven going off. Oh, and I, with our with our show, the Second Amendment Ranch, I got a video for you, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, I've got, a, I've got a guest for you. Oh, good. From from he lives in I want to say Indiana now, but was originally from Australia. <clears throat> so, and that's for our show Friday night. Yep. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, we had a, uh, on our uh, Born TV After Nine last night, we had a guest on there. He's a veteran. And in 1988, he jumped out of an airplane. And it didn't open, huh? And his chute didn't open. I know somebody who got paralyzed from that. And he said he bounced twice. Yeah. He bounced and got drugged 200 yards by the parachute. Yeah. This guy lives in, uh, that I knew, lived in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So. But he was on there last night. We was talking about <laughs> how the VA has cut his medicine off and everything. I mean, he broke every bone in his body. Yeah. He's and lucky stuff. to be alive. Right, but they've cut they've cut over half his pain medicines down on everything. That's the VA for you. Yeah, they don't want to give one. They don't want to give you a hundred percent. That's just they they will do everything in their power to avoid doing that. Two, when it comes to medication, they want to give you the bare minimum possible. So odds are they're like you get Motrin. Mm-hmm. Change your socks. Stay hydrated. You'll be just fine. Bro, what? Yeah. Especially somebody, you jump out of an airplane and your parachute don't open? Like I said, I remember talking to the guy that, that, uh, it happened in 1982. It happened in 82. And I saw him in 83 and he was wheelchair bound. Yeah. I don't know anything since then, of course, but. You know, for a 17-year-old kid, for me at the time, I was like, how in the hell do you, I know. Do you survive that? Well, it was a friend of Vince that he met and everything, and we had him on the show last night talking, Mail's his name, and uh, listening to him and listening to his story, you know, in the Army and everything like that, and then down there at Fort Bragg, Crap happened. Yeah. So before we get too far in depth on tonight's shows, I got to give two people shout outs. I don't know if I can tag them through StreamYard or if I have to tag them through Facebook and Instagram personally. I'm going to try. But I'm going to tag Warcrown Forge and Tensor Tactical. Warcrown Forge is a Navy veteran blacksmith. Um, Met him on TikTok, does a lot of really interesting work, and real great guy. I promised him. I told him, you know, we don't have a huge following, 
but I'd give him some shout outs on the shows. So right. let me let me give you he's small, personal owned, veteran business. So you know we're very fond of uh those types of work. But this is his you can find him on Instagram. If you find him on Instagram, let him know the broken biking sent you. But okay. look at some of the work. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then for ten sorta, if you if you want like custom work, really well done, I'm gonna recommend this guy. Great, phenomenal looking work. If you're looking for some stuff made in America, if you're looking for this is another small, basically brand new company that I got a hold of. Yeah, uh, I, they, I checked uh, them out. They are looking at possible sponsorship at some point in time, depending on how things go. And they're looking at starting to build their own stuff. One of the things I really like with this website, one, the prices are really nice. The other thing, you're going to see a lot of made in USA here. Awesome. So that's two reasons why I really like them. If you're looking for custom work or Crown Forge, if you're looking to just add to your collection, Tensor Tactical. So thanks, guys. That is awesome. Awesome. So check all those out, folks. Uh, Cameron will put them on, uh, post that on the Bill of Rights Network's Facebook page. Yeah, uh, I can tag I can all those guys. You know, any of our veterans, businesses, and stuff that's going to be made here in the USA, we will shout out. Hey, Luke, how you doing? We haven't talked to Luke for a long time. Live anywhere. But he's been popping in on our shows. And we appreciate that. Yeah, well, he's been under the weather and got back going again. And was coming to the U.S. and got stranded in Canada. And then they shipped him back home. So... Way I understand next month he should be coming through California, yeah, on his way to Texas. Well, I hope he gets gets here because I know I know he'll enjoy it when once he gets here, but he's got dual citizenship, so he already knows what he's coming into, right? Right? Well, he's got to come out there because uh, there's some new uh laws going in over in the uk he was talking about last night in the chat room on the show uh yeah he's be, be a lot better off getting over here yeah so so what's been going on with denise oh just trying to oh, our trip to uh asheville got changed so we're going to be doing that in Ju July or August. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we may not even go to Asheville. We might just go to Gatlinburg. You know, my uh, my niece and her husband's family, they go there every year. So I thought, you know what? Let's find out when they're going and find out what restaurant they're in. And we just walk in. There you go. Scare the living shit out of my sister. Oh, that would be great. You'd oh, get a yeah. kick out of that, wouldn't you? I've done it. I yeah. mean, we've done it before. You know, that's how kind of how Ron's birthday was. Yeah. You know, he just walked into a restaurant and here's all these people that we know. And he was shocked as shit. So um, I'm thinking that <laughs> might be good. Um, and Aunt Belle, she's going to be 96 this year in July. And, uh, you know, she they could show up. It's just down the road from there, from Bristol. So right. that might be able to, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Um, just working on a lot of, uh, a lot of work. I mean, work's been horrible. And we're not, only because we're putting in an upgrade on the 11th. And we have to be done with all this stuff by the 10th. And I have turned into our help desk for 120,000 projects all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I seem to be the only one that can be able to fix them. And it's like, okay, whatever, you know. Funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the minute that uh, 
<laughs> the minute that you you get a name for yourself or something, then that's it. So, you know, you were showing those knives. Have you seen Jason Hawk's knives? Mm -hmm. Check him out. I don't know if he's a veteran or not. He has cancer. That's why I do know he does have cancer. He's in the Ozarks down in uh, Arkansas. And uh, he's on the show Mountain Men. Oh. So, and he makes knives and they sell them at, at A.G. Russell Knives down in Bentonville. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know what what happened to him, if he died or not. <clears throat> he's, got a, he's got a more traditional mm -hmm. uh, style. If, if I found the right one, he's got a more traditional style uh yeah. crafting behind it they look very nice don't get me wrong but i mean they're everybody's got a taste i i'm more for a modern uh style now for the grip and textures behind mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. his his would be great for bushcraft what he his, his would be perfect for skin and deer cooking out in the woods uh you know cutting that's, the fish that's up. Kind of that's kind of his lifestyle. Um, they he actually dug that ore out of the mountains down there in Arkansas, and so it's made from raw raw ore from his own farm. That's kind of neat. Does he smell self defense? More than likely, he could probably make you a self defense spoon. He probably could. <laughs> True. So, and actually there's no, you could probably make your own self-defense spoon with concrete and a spoon and a regular spoon. Just go out there and just start rubbing it. There you go. Are, are we making shivs now? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? You're making a self-defense spoon. And well, you know, a lot of people die. I mean, they talk about there not being any gun violence in, um, you over in Japan, but more people die from stab wounds over there than anywhere else. So well, just because, yeah. Same way with what Luke used if, to tell. If, if I'm going to get another sharpen pointy right now, I'm I'm getting this. I, I, I just, like, I, I've got my pirate costume for Renfair. I just don't have a sword. And that's a perfectly functioning stonewashed sword. Uh, now, unfortunately, it's not as long as I'd like, but it, it never is. <laughs> I mean, you're used to that. <laughs> so needless to say, I, I, I watch Mountain Men with Ron a lot. So I knew that Jason made, Jason Hawk made knives and, and he seems like a nice enough guy. But again, I don't know anything other than what I see on TV. So but so did you guys enjoy last i know cameron didn't listen to my show last night did you enjoy that last night yes yes i did ron said he goes it turned out a lot different than i thought it would <laughs> i said well it's because that's the way i steered it i although, although yeah. they have a really nice axe that would be perfect for the next costume i want to make see this is what happens when cameron goes shopping for weapons bad things happen yeah I'm just gonna close that before I know last night's show with Tim <laughs> on there. That was I gotta go take real a big show right back. and stuff. Oh, I still have all this. Yeah, my uh my guest, Dave Spinks, had double booked. So I was I was in a kind of in a hurry to get another guest. And uh luckily Tim raised his hand and and uh when I go fishing, if I catch something, then I usually don't throw it back. So right, that's right. not really good. That was a good um, one. So, but that's how my shows usually turn out. You know, if right. I go hunting for somebody, it's going to be a good show regardless because they're they're motivated and so am I. So, and Jeremy was in the chat and and all yep. that. So yeah, it was yeah, dude, well. As soon as Jeremy gets all healed up, he'd be a good one on the show. And stuff. I'm well, ready. again, we're trying to move to video, and I don't know when that's going to be, but um, you I know, just, video killed the radio star. Yes, I know. I was alive during. I was much older than you when that happened. <laughs> 
Yeah, but you look at how many radio podcasts out there have all switched to video here in the last, we'll say two years. Yeah. Almost all of them. People think people... People want to see people's faces because of the pandemic. They right. got to the point to where they weren't seeing, they were seeing this. This is all they were seeing. And they just got to the point to where they wanted to see people's faces. And it made us feel better for people to see us smile than it did for. Wait, we smile and people want to see well, this ugly mug? Well, actually, your smile somewhere we where we can't see it. But. That's okay. <laughs> no. See, you smiled. <laughs> but, but yeah. The, the, the mustache gives it away. The, but well, people just now, Carl, it. you got Carl over here looking like a mountain man. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Used Thank to, you. I had the smallest beard on here. I don't have the smallest beard. No. Yours is just fuller. Yeah, mine's the smallest. Yeah. It's, and then come, that, it's come it's long enough to get a grip on now. Well, I can get a grip. You know, it's but I, I imagine by probably just love to grab you and yes. stuff. Yes, I'm I know. gonna guess by so, May time frame. This is gonna hey, be hey, back touch, Lori. Pretty good. Got Denise and Cameron on here. Oh, yeah, Randy's here. Hi, Denise. And hello to all the Marie's. Hi, Randy. So we have multiple Marie's in the chat room at this point. <laughs> yeah. Anne Marie, Dawn Marie. And Crystal Marie. Crystal Marie, yeah. So, and uh, I was glad to see that April made it made it to her. No, buddy. Not today. City. Not today. I'm not, I'm not, we're not going to play that game today. So. Damn. We'll, we'll, this little bugger all night last night would not get the hell off of me he Why was that? i don't know he just sucked i guess he was colder so he he didn't want to be in the bed then when he got in the bed he just fused to my spine and i'm like dude give me some room i woke up i was on the wall and he was in my spot and i'm like you're a dick <laughs> but yeah yeah i'm talking about you are you I'm talking about you. Oh, you're talking about the dog. Yeah, he's talking to the dog. I thought he was talking about me, and I was like, what did I do now? Damn. Well, you know. Damn, 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 damn. Hey. So, so, so we're also working on, um, so in April, instead of going there, we're going to go to Vegas and see the grandkids. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And it's going to be just me and Ron. Right. I want to take Ruby. Because that will be less stressful for me if I know that he's with me and he's not um, being a normal, violent four-year-old. Right. I'll play hide and seek on you again if you keep acting up. So that's what we're we're planning anyway. And then my daughter is going to be in town on the 19th. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a show on the 22nd or not. My daughter may be getting married. Oh, congratulations. Oh, really? Yeah, Leah and Tyler um, may be getting married. And if that's the case, then we may be out to dinner. That's understandable. Oh, yeah. You know, they've been together, shoot, eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. and there goes your light again. I know. It, like I said, it has to be something that, you know what? It's got to be that docking station. It's got to be. So, but you know what? I can unplug. I love how she starts playing with stuff and it's just, nope. Yeah, it froze. She is froze. Oh, yeah. Hello, folks. Are you there? No, Jenny, yeah, we're, yeah here. we're here. Are you there? You're froze. And she's got a high speed computer. Like 32 gonna, gig RAM. I have never met anybody or anything as needy as Gunny. There you are. Yeah, it. I unplugged it 
to see if unplugging it from the docking station would, would make now you're freezing and slowing down you're not coming up here today not yeah here. she's whatever she did she has to hook it back up we're gonna we'll snuggle i promise we'll snuggle Boxer for adoption. Who wants him? Right. You just got to babysit him for a week. Let me catch up on some sleep. Now you're back. You were froze. I know. Like I said, it, once I unplug the docking station, I have all kinds of issues when I plug it back into the docking station. So I know. Like I, said, I know it's a problem. HP says it's going to be a year before they have enough docking stations to ship to our company. Oh, really? So, needless to say, I've got to figure it out or get new drivers installed, whatever. But I've been having problems since I got this computer with the docking station. And since I didn't start out the show wirelessly, that's where the problem came in right there. If I had already been um, not plugged into the docking station, I probably just plugged into just a power brick. Mm -hmm. I'd probably be fine. Right. So we'll try that next time and see. But again, I, I've got a lot more room since I changed up the desk and, and stuff. And people may notice that I don't have a wrap, you know, an old curtain behind me and, and stuff. But it looks good with the blurred picture back there. I like the blurred part. Yeah. I, so far, I haven't had luck with the green screen. Like I said, I need to put it up higher because hey, it's, showing, it's showing the wall over here. I kind of uh -huh. need it to kind of be circular a little bit, you know, um, curved. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can do that. So I may just take it and it's got a holder. Maybe I can put the holder up on top of this TV stand mm -hmm. and hold it up higher. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. I just didn't have time today. Like I said, I've been right. working a lot on uh, on this project for work, and work comes first. And uh, one of the things we, like I said, this weekend we spent the time. I told Ron. I said, I'm not feeling like I'm getting any work done because I feel disorganized. And so we set up the desk and cleaned up my area, and I now have, you know, a lot more room to move. Um, if I'm the broken Viking, he's definitely the broken brain cells. Mm. <laughs> well, that says something about the person who picked him out. I yeah. didn't pick him out. He picked me. Oh, that's right. He's the one you found roaming around in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next to the road in freezing weather. Well, at least at least he's not a dumb boxer. Mm. He I don't think know. he's dumb. He acts dumb. He also doesn't like to listen. But I think I don't think he's dumb. I think he I think he's just stubborn. Just kind of like you were when you were younger. I'm still stubborn. Yeah. Oh, we know that. But. So now good for April. She gets to join in on the shows in her in the central time zone now, as opposed to being two hours. Right. I know they're up there in Wisconsin. Did they get in their house? No, not in their house. They're they got three weeks until then. And they gotta stay in a motel for three weeks. Uh wherever they're staying, yeah. So in April, dog training by Becca. I will be sending you that information. Um, Lauren looked at the the stuff you sent me and she said Becca would be the best one to talk to. So on oh well, that's because you want everybody. For sleeping anyway in one area is what you said the last time. Hi, Russell. Hey, Russell. So I can't believe they didn't put you up in a residence inn or something. Yeah. With a two bedroom and then the sofa bed in the middle and her and all the boys and Richard in one the room. Dog and the cat. Oh lordy. My and one bathroom. Oh. oh. There is isn't no. any available. That's why. Uh, well, at least you don't have to clean the room up as much. They, 
actually, when we go to Vegas, we found out um, the last two times we went, they don't come in. You know how? Okay, this is going to sound weird. You know the uh, remember the the shooting, the mass shooting there at the festival. Yeah. And they said, okay, now we have to go into everybody's room at you know at least once a day, make sure things are are kosher and all that. Now you're lucky if they get in there every third day to clean up your room. Right. So totally flip flop overall this time. You know, mm -hmm. in the past, if you just said, you know, after the shooting, if you just said, no, I don't need anything, you know, they were still coming in your room when you weren't, weren't around. Now you, you have to beg them to come into your room. So it sounds like, uh, uh, sounds like Mr. Ron is going to be, get, be coming in. Yeah. I see a shadow figure back there. <laughs> yeah. Shadow figure. <laughs> Well, it's in the blurred part. Yes, but it's, it's moving general. around. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got shadow spirit. figures going through your bedroom. Yeah. It's a crazy spirit. Give me the ball. Crazy, my spirit guide. Give me the ball. Yeah. Come on, so, give me the ball. Paul. Oh man. But, Paul. Uh, it's yeah, blurry, so you have to. Pastor Gary's doing pretty good. 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 Yeah. He got him a new computer. I had to go down there and get it all set up. I got one on order. You got one on order. Yeah, laptop. What yeah. kind? An HP. I picked them out one that was pretty good. Got I it mean, for less than four hundred dollars. Not bad. Yeah, the the keyboard's already here because he wanted a, an a external keyboard. Yeah. That's what <laughs> showed up. It's going to be another month before his computer shows up. Oh, really? Yeah, like I said, my 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 laptop here. This one is HP. The docking station is HP. There's so there's a ship chip shortage. So it's, I wonder why. Yeah, they're not sitting off the coast right now. No, no, no. So that's the no. reason why there's not as many cars being built. There's all kinds of crap. Right. So, in fact, my new dryer does not have any chips in it. I told him I wanted a stand, a basic dryer, high, low, air. That's it. Uh huh. That's, that's what I got. So I don't have to worry about the computer going out in my dryer. So. I I'm so tired of everything being. Truck, look, my truck's got an electrical problem, and I was hoping it was just a, a computer ch or a uh, fuse. It's not. From what I can tell, what I found, it's the grounding wire. How the hell do you screw up the grounding wire? Oh, it's easy. They don't so, tighten it down for one thing. So I've got to try and figure out how I'm going to crawl up in there and take that thing apart and look at it and see if that's actually what it is. They just, there's too much computers in everything now. There is. And that's the reason why that I think that's what went wrong with my my last dryer. It's a Chevy there, uh, Dogsy. So, which Chevy's not known for electrical problems, transmission problems, not yeah. electrical. They're also Ford's known, known for, for electrical. Now, Chevys are also known for not getting very warm in the wintertime. Oh, no, mine gets hot. And the other thing is, is they get paint that turns pink. That they do. Yeah, their, their, clear paint, coat, their clear coat ain't the greatest. No, their red paint usually turns pink. Government motors. Yep. Yep. Ron went on a Chevy. If in April goes to apparently there's a windshield glass shortage too. Yeah. I take it she's got a broken windshield. Well, Ron knew that because he was having trouble getting his replaced. And as soon as he got it replaced, what, a rock went yeah, into like, it like three days later? Yeah. Happens okay. every time. Luke says he's going to stick with his 90s Land Rover. I would. I would, too. Those things are supposed to last forever. Mm-hmm. Did you see that Toyota's got some kind of little Corolla crossover thing? Yeah. It's ugly as shit. Yeah. Well, did you see that new thing out about uh, the new Ford truck? It's electric. 
that's going to power your whole house? Yes, I had. I own. I got to disclose. I own about three hundred fifty shares of Ford stock. <laughs> Buy Ford. Buy Ford. But yeah, during the ice storm last year down there in Houston, in Texas, they Ford loaned out a bunch of these of their trucks that have generators built in. And I told Ron, I said, that would be the reason I would buy a Ford truck if I lived in an area where there's hurricanes or, you know, major storms like that. I would have a truck that had a generator in it. Oh, yeah. So, but yeah, Ford loaned a bunch of those out and they've got like, I thought it was 70,000 electric trucks on order right now. Right. Which is why my stock is doing so well. I bought it at like oh, oh, no. You're seven dollars a share, and it's twenty one or twenty two, maybe even twenty four now. Going that way. You're going that way. Same Don't as MGM. Wait. I bought a bunch of MGM stock at what, fifteen dollars, and it's forty five. Right. So Luke, so says, Luke says my Land Rover was an ex Army Defender ninety, and that thing when I got it had been shot at. And everything. Two weeks later, it was driving again. Luke knows his stuff on a lot of these vehicles over there. Yeah, Luke, come fix my truck for me. When he oh, gets I, there, I don't. I don't have the energy right now. Land Rovers this, are my. my this, this is really good. Hey, my come past, fix my Jeep. Yeah, my past several weeks have just been. You know how hard it is to find the power steering pulley tool. The what? Power steering pulley tool. Hmm. To put the pulley on your power steering pump and take it off. Right now, the closest one I can find is in Lansing, Kansas. Oh, that's not too far from here. It's farther from me. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Well, that's because every company is wanting you to order it, have it shipped, so you have to pay for shipping and handling. Right. Pay a shipping fee. They get I more mean, money that way. Everybody must have went to Harbor Freight and bought them all, too, because they don't have none up there now. I don't know if I would really trust a Harbor Freight part in my vehicle. Hey. Their their tools are designed to be cheap and easily replaced. They're, they're one-time use type tools. That's exactly. all I needed is one time. Yeah. yeah. All I got to do is put the pulley on the power steering pump. It takes a special tool. It does. I, uh, so you know what? A lot of things take special tools. tools. Oh, Cameron is a special tool. I know that. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. On a Jeep. And yep. I come. Yep. Luke, special tools right. irritate the hell out of me. I'd rather just rig something Jeep. up. Like, I will find a way to make something work. Spanner wrenches. What are those special tools that just blows my mind the fact that they exist because it's two pin hole or two pins that go in two holes and you tighten it down if you do not have the right size you cannot tighten or loosen anything down you have to have not just the special tool but the right size tool why can't i just take vice grips to everything like that's the best tool i can think of see now i can borrow the tool from luke i just got to go to the uk and get it Maybe, yeah. he can, maybe he can mail it to you. There you go. But uh, no, you know what's really stupid on this Jeep is the high pressure power steering line. You got a power steering pump, okay? Right behind it, about a foot, is your rack and pinion. Why do they have a line go from the power steering pump all the way across behind the driver's headlight? around and come back down to the rack and pinion because it looked good on paper no because yeah. they didn't think they did well, not that, think that, that's I one reason i greatly it. despise engineers i can understand you, you it, talk to you any mechanic. two bolts that's behind the headlight behind the holder of the headlight that you can't get to you talk without to, cutting it yeah you talk to any mechanic any craftsman, anybody that works with their hands, when it comes to engineers, engineers are despised. They are the most disgusting mm -hmm. existing human that we can meet because they never put hands on anything. 
They never get that face-to-face working on an experience. So they put crap where it fits or it makes sense on paper. On paper, it's not going to tell you that's a high, high temp line. Right. Oh, there's a valve in between two pipes, and these pipes, when you touch them, will give you instant second to third degree burns. But this is where that valve needs to go. Why? Why yeah. do you have to put this valve in an outboard below a deck at where I have to go upside down and basically look like I'm about to get plowed to access this valve? It doesn't make sense. No. Put shit where it makes sense. If you don't have the any engineer, any college son of a bitch that goes to college for an engineering degree needs to go get hands-on experience, whether they be at college, before they start manufacturing, go get the actual experience, hands-on experience. So when you design something, we don't hate you anymore. Because I promise, if we find the engineers that design half the crap we have to deal with, we would sodomize them with whatever tool we have handy. Oh, I hate engineers. Oh, I know, but the biggest thing with the engineers is if they design one and make the prototype, it they ought to be required to go out and work on that engine in all ways, shape, and form. Yes. Because if they can't do it, then they don't need to be making any more of them. There you go. And then Luke says That's Kia better. is the worst stupid design he's worked on. I don't know. BMW uh, has some the, the there are German hard. engine. I've I've seen those monstrosities of engines with all the cables and lines that are no, God no. No, you want to know the worst one, and that was a Fiero. I miss. Yeah, those the, are little, and they in had the more middle. Front, yeah, and they I had would, more front end than they than back end. I would love an old four-door box Chevy. There you go. You could work in the engine yeah. compartment. You could stand you, in you it. You could go and hug your engine block. Yeah. Literally. You signed Maximo. That was 84 Maximo. That thing was easy. It was a straight six. It had plenty yeah. of room. And it talked. Yeah. It was a neat car. But my next vehicle that I'm hopefully getting, if I can get my debts paid off, is motorcycle. So, well, talk about getting your fingers into little things. BMW yeah, but better gas mileage than my truck. The instruction manual. That's good. Luke put one down there. Yeah, I'm not good with Legos, Luke. <laughs> we. I'm sorry. I work with engineers every day. That's they they can't solve a they can solve one problem, but they have no common sense. There you go. They you're you're going to need but this more than I do. Others. Yeah, just, I mean that's what just, I deal with every day. Is, is yeah. Engineers. I went I went to college. I could have went in electronics engineering or electronics tech. I said I think I'm more in line with the tech. I said I can fix all the engineers' screw ups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. Well, that's why the engineers design it so the mechanics out here can fix it. Right. I mean, it probably would have been a good engineer because I was really good at math. But I am not. It was just boring. It is. It is boring designing. Yeah. Now, you give me something to take apart and then fix it and put it back together, that intrigues yep. me. The BFH. You know, yeah, BFH works very good. Yeah. I've used it a many a times. There's I just don't want to tear apart a transmission, all the rings and seals. And... No, I'm going to lose track of what's third gear, fourth gear. I'm... That's they all look... a mechanic. They you all look the same. Yeah, but I never worked on car engines. When you, when you took it apart. <laughs> yeah. That was me. I had good I... memory, so I... Yeah. When I'd be laying car. everything out and and lay like this is first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth, however many gears I got, because I've seen the amount of rings that go into a transmission. And, whew. I know. Uh, and it's funny, it's funny that Luke says that because in the Navy, there's a piece of uh, equipment that you have to use. 
percussive ma- uh, how did they phrase it mechanical agitation i shit you not there's a piece of equipment i don't know if i can disclose it or not so i'm not going to but it's a it's a valve or a gauge that is based off of magnets of all things and it's it's fluid level and they're using magnets to gauge it so the manual the sop says in order to get an accurate gauge reading utilizing mechanical agitation figure out the right level which translates to beat it with a mallet <laughs> oh the navy well you did have a lot of pent-up frustration so they were helping you they were trying to <laughs> Yeah, when I was growing up... You can't beat people, but you can beat this. Here you go. That's right. So, yeah, when I was growing up, my mom would give me broken things and say, here, fix it. And I would. I mean, that's how I learned how to do all the shit I can do. You know, I can fix almost anything if I know what it, you know, if I know what it is. I know. Hey, I'm trying not. I'm trying not to get copyrighted over here. They got the jukebox going. I oh. we can't hear it. Huh? We can't hear it. Oh, I'm sure it's, Facebook can hear it. It's faint, but I can't make it out, so I don't think they'll let There's us. There's a it. remote for it, Tammy. I yep. mean, it's it's we. You got to get in the office. That's you got to get a little room for you to do you. I know. I do. I'm working on that. Believe me. A little room. Believe me. In the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Go do it back by the fryer. <laughs> yeah. I'll go over here by the. Uh, go to the uh, bar. <laughs> that I would, but I don't pick the internet up in there very good. Oh. Yeah. They, there's a few dead spots in there. If you're doing yeah. wirelessly. A anyway. few shots and who would even care? Yeah. Well, I should be <laughs> well, back. Carl there. definitely won't. <laughs> The new bar and smoking area back there, that's where I need to be at, but I don't pick the internet up back there that good. Just gotta run a just gotta run a wire to it. I know. Yeah, just ethernet. I don't want to have to climb up in this little two foot. You know what? Attic. You could get you could get yourself a repeater. I know. And plug into that. I, I mean, that's what you told I've me. Already got, I've got one, but you know what else you could get, Carl? A spoon so you could suck it up. Or a hey. straw so you can suck it up. No, no remember what, I we're need, using what I need to do is set a schedule where I can be at home doing these shows. Yeah, what really. I need to do. Well, again, we remember oh. we're using spoons for self One, two, now, so. three. Be careful what to, spoon you grab. No, 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 no. You you had to see what I see. Three people turn trying to turn down a jukebox. When the remote control oh, board God. is jetting <laughs> over there, and all they had to do was I'm sorry. It's, like, mon- it's like monkeys fornicating with a football. Turn down the jukebox. No, it no. it makes me think of something I shouldn't say. Carl's gonna t- turn into Bubba real quick. Bubba shot the jukebox last night. Well, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Are they Polish? How, how many Polacks does it take to turn down a jukebox? Well, we'll, we'll put it this way. You had we're get, we're Tammy, trouble tonight. you had Tammy, you had Jeanette, and you had uh, Carrie. And, we and have Bob, an age group from 62 down to 18. You should have gave it to the four-year-old. And they're yeah. moving the jukebox out, trying to find the knob on the back. It's a remote, sweetheart. They're, they're not done yet. Oh. I got to do this. You you know one of the new features, Cameron, on StreamYard? Uh, I know of the music. No. Check this out. Oh, wait a <sighs> second here. I should not have taken my meds. Oh, and you're not me. helping me, any. Stuff I helps went, me sleep. but I went to bed late. Got up early this morning to take my daughter to the dentist to get her teeth pulled. And then tomorrow I have to go to the dermatologist. So it'll be another early morning. I, just, I know I your was... are earlier, but I didn't go to bed until after one. And my daughter's uh, appointment was in town. Monday, I was up to like three o'clock. So I just, hey, I'm not going to make it. I'm not feeling good. I didn't sleep for shit. 
yesterday I was up to like 11, 12 o'clock, just kind of fall asleep, and I was in and out for the next. And it's because the heat's on. Like, dude, get another blanket. You're not paying the electricity. You're paying the internet. And you're splitting some other fees to try and equal it out. But wintertime is supposed to make up for summertime. Our bill should be 80 bucks, not $110. Stop turning the damn heat. We've got more than enough blankets in this house. Right. Grab another blanket. Okay, Stop. Cameron. It's 60 you... degrees is too, too daggum warm right now. You know how on our Second Amendment ranch show you're doing uh, disassembling the guns and everything? Yeah. You had to have two browsers opened up? Yeah. You don't have to now. Really? Watch this. Uh, now we're hearing the radio. No, I still don't hear it. I do. Well, that's because you have on a headset. Yeah, true. The average person is not going to hear that. No. Well, you're either closed or not very busy. Not very busy. So the, what I'm showing you, Cameron, is this camera over here, the one I have right here. Yeah. I don't have the audio hooked up on it. So it just shows the picture. That's why you're not hearing the music. How right. are you? Okay. Down there on your share button. Yeah. Click on it. See uh, extra camera. Oh, cool. If you've got your other webcam hooked up, it'll go. And then I can stop the camera just like that. Oh, well, that's yeah. handy. Isn't that real handy? Yeah. Can you close that one? No. <laughs> Y'all have to deal with double camera tonight. Oh, no. But, yeah, that's a new feature that StreamYard added. So when you're doing your gun cleaning, yeah, all you got to do is hit that share to that extra camera and don't fight it like you were. That will probably help some of those cooking shows. Probably. It will. Mm -hmm. Because you could have the camera up here, and I just put it on real quick. and share and then they could have their cooking show and show everything see right there we are folks if you wonder what stream yard looks like this is how we do it technically we could set up the discord like that too if we live stream through discord yep. we could have it to where everybody sees the uh other comments as well you just have it focused on the comments and they can see, you That's know. That's what you do sometimes, some people do sometimes with uh, live feeds on uh, hey, YouTube. Hey, Gary. There's Gary. Hello, Gary. Hello, Crystal. Hey, hey Crystal. Gary. How you doing? Uh -huh. We're just talking about oh, some showing shit. new features and, and stuff on our stream yard. How you like your new computer, Gary? Good. I'm glad to hear that he got a new one. He needs. Yeah, he got a real nice one. I think it's a 24 inch all in one. Oh, okay. So yeah, basically a desktop computer, not a laptop. Right. That yeah, I almost his camera. I looked at one though. I looked at that. Uh, his camera and everything built into it, real nice. Yeah, it's great. So I showed him in case he ever wanted to be on shows or anything, how we could do it. We'll put him on. No. Well, we put, I ordered Ron a laptop so that if I'm not here and he's, you know, going to be on one of the shows, he can do it. Right. So well, I'll send, him a I'm going to send Pastor Jerry the uh, link. Well, he just got home. See so if he can. So he just got home. So see if he can come on and how it'll work for him. Because we haven't, you guys haven't talked to him for quite a while. No. Mm -hmm. We haven't. We haven't seen him. A little bit in chat, but that's about it. So you're going to join in this? Okay, Russian Gary. On your Facebook page, I just sent you a link. Click on it. Follow the instructions. On his Facebook page or in his messenger? In his Facebook messenger. Okay. I was like, got to be specific. Yeah. But go to your messenger. On Facebook is a StreamYard deal. Push on it and follow the information. And we'll see if we can get him on here. 
because I got to get him interacting a lot more and stuff so he's not sitting there at the house by himself. Yeah, I guess there's no mowing that can happen out of the graveyard right now. No, we're going to get out there and start doing some stuff as soon as the weather does straighten up, which it is nice out right now. Hello, Ingrid. Hello, Ingrid. Here yeah. he is. Here's Gary. Hello. Hey, Gary. Hello, Ingrid. Can you, you hear us, Gary? Hello, Ingrid. Here he is. Hello. Hey, Gary. Can you hear us, Gary? I'm doing great for what I've been through. Needs to turn off your volume down, Gary. What I've been through. Needs to turn off your volume down, Gary. That worked. No. You're gonna have to get you a headset. Yeah, I know. I haven't got over to get that yet right they have to get there. your headset well we're yeah, no, getting it I haven't. Uh, <laughs> do you have Echo. another do you have another browser opened yeah, up with our show on uh, <laughs> but you're all talking at once you're all talking at once how many browsers you got open <laughs> You're all talking at once. <laughs> What's all the echoing? Feedback. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> What's all the echoing? <laughs> Feedback. Trying to figure it out. What's all the echoing? <laughs> Feedback. Trying to figure I'm not saying all that. <laughs> hey, Gary. Uh, yeah, Put one of your browsers down. <laughs> he can't hear us. Yeah. Yeah. He can't hear us. Yeah, I hear you. Your hearing is delayed. Yeah, I hear you. Your hearing is delayed. Well, you're going to have to come back and give me more instructions. Yeah, I, I will. I will. Well, you're right. going to have to come back and give me more instructions. But anyway, everybody wanted to see you, Gary, and we will talk to you later. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gary. Yeah, he had to have uh, multiple he, he, With how long of a delay it had, he had to be watching the show as well. Right. It's kind of like a radio show when somebody's he had, on the radio. You know, he was watching the show and went to Facebook. Then I bet yeah. it opened up another browser. So yeah. he had the Facebook going too. Yeah. Yeah. We That's had the that only thing I can think of. Too. Yeah, that's why I just muted because I didn't... I just figured if I muted, at least it would be one less thing you could hear. Yeah. So, Gary, if you're listening to us right now, I want you to, you got two browsers opened up. Shut down your Facebook browser. Give me a thumbs up if you did that. Because of the fact that he could. Okay, testing, now testing, one, two, three. Yep, I hear you. Hey. We're good to go. We got okay. you. There you go. Okay, now you're now you're on the StreamYard browser. Yeah. And have all the others shut down. Right. That way we don't get a feedback. Okay. Said so sound better. <laughs> Yes, that sounds yeah, a lot better. better. Sounds real good, real good. And we're only hearing it. That, actually, I was doing—I was working real hard to get all of you to laugh, and it worked. <laughs> oh, it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. It made Sally yeah. laugh. Yeah. Yo, how am I looking? You look wonderful. Yeah, look good. The camera looks fantastic. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Can almost read the book. Well, I the think I look pretty good for after a doctor told me I shouldn't be here. Yep. I love proving doctors wrong. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it, he had a widow maker. 
Yeah, but luckily he had it in the hospital. Somehow, some way. I didn't have it in the hospital. I was outside when I had it. He had it well, in the driveway. Yeah, oh, but, but again, you didn't show it. You you said that you were doing no, you were doing decent in the ambulance, and then they didn't see any signs in the ambulance. And when you got to the hospital, is when it got really bad. Is no. That what I heard? Okay, go ahead. Tell us. Okay. I had the attack outside. I just taken trash out to the road. About halfway back to the house is when it hit. It felt like a knife went in the center with a fireball. Oh, man. And I knew I had to get back to the house to be able to call because that's where my cell phone was. I remember getting to the steps to get up into the house. I do not remember coming up those steps. But I got into the house, called 911. By the time the ambulance got here, the pain had lessened. But they, and I told them immediately, I said, do not stop at the Cameron Hospital. And they told me, well, we've got to put this test on you. And if it shows you're having a heart attack, then we oh, have to do. stop there. Yeah. And so they put it on, run that test. I was not showing any signs of heart attack. So they was able to get past Cameron to go to Liberty. And we got to Liberty and they drove all the way. No lights, nothing yeah. excessive. Got to the hospital, put me in a bed in the emergency room. And immediately said, this man's having a heart attack. Wow. And, of course, I was on nitro and this and that of them. You were on nitro? Where Did they also give you aspirin in the ambulance? I don't know what all the... I don't remember an aspirin. Because that's what they do to me when I first get to the hospital. More than likely they did. You may not have known. Yeah. Ambulances are a great, uh, great way to find out things don't work for you. Yeah, I've, I found out morphine doesn't work on me. Yeah. Well, I had three doctors tell me that I shouldn't have made it to the hospital. Wow. That I was... Angels had to cure me. In I was going to say, this, you're probably lucky you got you made it to Liberty and, and didn't go to Cameron. You may not have made it if you went there. So I'm curious, why didn't you want to go to the closer hospital? There's a snow. I can tell you what we think of the closer It's a band-aid station. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah we don't go to anybody in the area yeah. calls it. It's an actual hospital, in the, but it's a band-aid. In the years yeah. I have pastored that church, I've probably lost seven or eight people in that hospital. So it's a minor emergency. It's yeah. a hospital, but it's a minor. Right. Yeah, right. It's very good. Yeah, it's, it's there in Atchison, Kansas. You don't want to be in either one of those. No. In fact, one time. Anyway, I had the back major artery and the front major artery 98% plug. Holy cow. I've got one other one that was 60 to 85. They didn't try to do anything with it. Did you change your one, diet now? One doctor wanted to do open heart. Another one said stents, and I said stents. Yep, go up through your leg and get it done. Yeah, and then they had a problem with that. Got back up to the room and the vein blew. Oh, man. Mm. When I left the hospital six days later, my leg was totally black from Ooh. hip to knee. Oh. And the pressure they have to put on that vein to get it to stop, that's terrible. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm here. Doing good, looking good. Yeah, yeah you look do. good. Look really good. So I'm still going to take care of cemetery. 
a month after my surgery, I went back down for a checkup and I asked the doctor, I said, what kind of restrictions do I have? And they said, what restrictions? We want you to go out and do what you were doing before. That's good. Go out go, and live. Go live life. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Did, did, are you cha- yeah. did you change your diet at all? Oh, yeah. No more burgers? Oh, no salt. <laughs> oh, well, right, right. No salt. So- I mean, we no already salt. do no salt. And yeah, for years. And I've never cooked with salt. Here's what I'm doing at night. What is that? Juice. No juice. What kind I had of juice? pancakes for breakfast. And I had sausage and biscuits yesterday, gravy and biscuits. <laughs> well, that's got a little bit <laughs> of stuff. Up, up in at yeah, he was up here. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I didn't take him his flag. I kept forgetting to give him. Yeah. Freezing. Freezing. Matter of fact. Oh. oh now I'm going to tell you why I needed to get out of the house today. <clears throat> Last night, the odor of brownies was so strong. <laughs> it was so strong, I went up and made sure the oven wasn't on. Because I, Sue, the last several years, she very seldom ever baked cookies. But every time the kids come up, she always baked brownies. Mm. Brownies was strong last night. Hmm. Almost as strong as the kerosene was, Carl. Oh, really? And kerosene was down in the old St. Luke's Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. St. Luke's or the Trinity Lutheran? Uh, Trinity Trinity. Lutheran. I I used to work for Trinity Lutheran. That's the only reason I can remember that. Uh, I wonder how the people in the apartments are getting along. I don't know. I bet there's some good activity down there. That's that hospital that we uh yeah downtown day to day we were turning into condos yeah yeah the one that i decided not to go to yeah 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 that that's the one where i took sebastian down a hallway and he run into the meanest looking spirit he'd ever seen in his life yeah you know but, some, they say that there's times that when you you know, renovate a place that you could get a lot of spirit activity. Some of them, when you change them around so much, sometimes it alleviates spirit activity. It changes it. It's like they don't know where they are and they leave. So who knows what happened? I don't know what. The, right. What have they done to that place that you they, know? Of? They were already in the process of really? building condos. Yeah. Every time we went down there twice. <sighs> yeah, twice. Each time, a different section was shut down. Oh, you could walk okay. up in there and you could see where they put the steel girders up yeah. to make the steel wall frames and everything. Yeah. But to give Cameron an idea of this hospital, it's an old, old hospital in downtown Kansas City that before we could investigate it, we had to walk through every floor, hallway, room with somebody with a gun to clear the building. See, that's the part that pissed me off because these are homeless people. They have nowhere to go. I, I would have felt bad. A lot of these were drug dealers down there. Yeah. We went into two rooms and I had to block chairs off so people wouldn't go in the rooms to give you an rough idea. And Pastor Gary will tell you, on the floor was over 10,000 hypodermic needles. See, that's part of the reason I wouldn't have wanted to be been it. there. But those we are found two possible. rooms like that, and I blocked them off so nobody go in there. Mm. Then we had to go over and block off the elevator shafts <laughs> yeah. that were oh, open. Man. It was full of water. Well, yeah. the wow. the Belvoir Winery has some uh, areas that have open elevator shafts. Yeah, but going and, through there, and you had to be with a group or one or two guys together that had a gun or knife or something 
we had to go through and clear the building to make sure there was no homeless or druggies or anything in that building. See, I can do that job. That's that's the part that I understand. That's the only investigation I know I've been on that uh, four people were packing pistols. <laughs> yeah. And I, they, I don't think they'd like... What are you going to do, shoot a ghost? I don't think they'd like the pistols that I'd bring. <laughs> no, but it you would have seen it was it was a trip. Pastor Gary's got pictures and everything on the old computer. Now is this a situation where it's shoot first, ask questions later? Yeah. I can do that. I know. Well, the, the whole point was not to shoot someone. To right. Sp- basically to scare them. Because you Kansas City, just Missouri. Chase them out of there. But after I seen all them hypodermics, I was like, uh huh. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to risk my life for getting stabbed with a hypodermic needle. Yeah. And with that many drug dealers, if I'm sweeping a building at this point in time, any movement is going to stop moving very quickly. Yeah, but the thing is, is you got the death penalty in Missouri. You don't want to shoot to kill at all. It's it's not life-threatening. Yeah. Then I would, I would yeah. avoid that. Yeah, because they're still putting uh, people to death at Potosi. So. That's the building. Carl and I were walking down, and all of a sudden, this real strong odor of kerosene come up. Mm. And there wasn't no kerosene there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was weird. Now, there are different, different places you go to investigate. I'll or, be right back, guys. Or you'll get different smells. You know? And we, one, we've had that when we were at the uh up there in Atts in the uh, uh pepper mill. Yeah, the old river house. Yeah, you you now go the new river house. you go like in the back the back part and you get like a cherry pipe tobacco smell. Well we found out later on that was that was the bar the smoking room. Yeah, that was that was where everybody hung out was at the bar. When we went to the other side, it was upstairs. We went to the other side of the building. You get a like a lilac perfume smell. And we later found out that's where the uh, ladies, the, the ladies of the night would. That's where they stayed. But you the, know what's really the weird? red light district ladies? Yeah. Well, it was a. It was well, a that's in the and the guys would be, you know, basically across the hall, at the bar, you know, smoking and drinking, and you know, waiting, waiting for their turn. Cameron, no, what's really weird pit. about this place at, Pepper, at the Pepper Mill was, we had we had lots of different people come in there, but only the guys would smell this perfume. The women never did. But I saw her. Yeah, she saw it, but she they the the women didn't smell the perfume. Yeah, her name was. It was just the guys that did. That's that was even that was strange. The Pepper Mill had a strange history. It is actually the oldest building in Atchison. the The original first building in Atchison was built on that site, so it's still got a a <sighs> dirt basement. A a Native American was drugged out of that basement and hung. Oh man! Right oh. out on the. Um, right on the river there. Yeah, that first night we were there. That was, yeah, oof. we had uh, so much activity there. And the thing is, is I found all this information later. I was telling them during the the investigation, this is what happened here. Um, they had hid her. This Native American girl was hidden by the the ladies that lived in the the ladies only hotel. Is what they what it yeah. was. It was one of eight brothels in ha- Atchison at the time. And the ladies hid her because she was only 16 years old and she was being raped and abused by the, by her owner. And so they were hiding her. And when the police came, they found, found the young lady in the basement. They drug her outside and her owner proceeded to kill her because she had, she had um, fought back on him and hurt him. So she was killed. And she was only a 16 year old Native American girl. And there are facts that surround this happening. And uh, so we used to do tours there. Uh, we did, it was called Dinner and a Ghost Hunt. 
started on Valentine's Day in 2014. Yeah. <laughs> Just right. So this week we did that in 2014 and we did, uh, we did like three or four of them and uh, we did, we had a really yeah, good turnout. Had... But after the first one, you remember we were talking about yeah, Cameron Hospital? Mm-hmm. Yep. After the first one, yeah. I told Ron he, he had wanted to stay the night in atchison at our friend's house and i said no we got to go home we have to go home i can't stay i have to go home technically i had a heart attack that night and i didn't know it and uh is what they think happened but it took us two weeks to find out what had happened because the next morning i woke up yeah she was completely drained she had no no energy whatsoever i went out i got breakfast wiped out i came home and I couldn't eat half that biscuit that I had bought. I laid down and went to sleep, ended up with a really high fever, nauseous, didn't know what was going on. And so this was on a Saturday. On Sunday, I got up and I couldn't even stand up. And I told Ron, I said, I don't know what's wrong. And so what do I do? I hop in the car and I take my daughter with me and I drive myself to the doctor's office to find out what's wrong. And they never checked my heart. They told me I had labyrinthitis. Whatever so, that is. Yeah, lab- that's why I gave. Labyrinthitis is a virus in your deep inner ear that, you know, you basically can't stand up. You it, it wasn't it. And it wasn't that because I was doing all the medication and everything for it and I wasn't getting any better. And uh about 2 weeks later Ron said he took me to the doctor and they go, we think she had a heart attack. And so I'm still seeing, still seeing the pulmonologist to this day. (laughs) So, but needless to say, I told him we couldn't stay. And that was the big thing was I told him, I said, I don't know why we couldn't stay, but after I asked you why, and you said, I, I I just, I just want to go home. I just want to go. And that was late. It was, it was like two 30 in the morning. Yeah, it was. And, and I told him, I said, I just want to go home and that's it. And it is because I was going to end up in a crappy hospital, but I didn't know that at the time. So it was horrible. That hospital is terrible. So if you're ever in, if you're ever back in Missouri, Kansas area, avoid Cameron Hospital and avoid the Atchison Hospital. That's right. And, well, you'd probably go to Leavenworth or lansing to the va hospital there if you had to go to the hospital well i got the va in kansas city but i prefer not to go down there yeah nobody yeah. likes the va yeah last time i went down there, oh you had a heart attack we'll see you next week no they just like they were sort of run stuff down my veins to check everything out and have you ever got the results they, they didn't that? hit the vein. Hey, did you oh, did you ever get my arm swelled up like Popeye? Yeah, but did you ever get the results of your test? <laughs> no. So yeah, you have right. cancer and not even know it. Carl had all kinds of purple after that. Oh, oh, I know. I got out there. Pastor Gary was with me, and I got out to the truck, and my arm looked like Popeye. Oh man, it was swelled up real big. Hey, yeah. Well, how long is that oh. going to be? I said, well, they said it could take a week to two weeks for it to go down. So I had all that dye inside me <laughs> happen to go everywhere. And I'm like, where's it going to go? It just has, you have to flush it out of your system by drinking as much as you possibly can. Yes, I did. So, and, and ice, Nick, lots and lots of ice bath. Yeah. Right. And Nick, I got the haircut. It was probably a month three ago. Three weeks? Now. Yeah, at least three weeks. Yeah. Why am I pissing purple? <laughs> so, yep. Which off. you can actually do that. I found that out in high school. <laughs> I, You know, my I always have a big-ass drink here, right? Yeah. High C has the gallon jugs and stuff, and I bought two gallons of blue high C. And my, <laughs> my school teacher was like, you know you're going to piss blue. And I'm like, that's a myth. That's not going to happen. No, that's real. <laughs> You 100% will piss blue. You drink enough of a colored liquid, it's coming out whatever colored liquid you were drinking. So if you drink a lot of like Hawaiian punch and you start peeing red, don't freak out just yet. Is there any red dye in your drink? In this one? Yeah, is there any red 40 in it? It's like crush, isn't it? Mm-hmm. 
I think Ron asked me how much I had changed my Red diet. 40. That makes pe that makes children extremely hyperactive. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to go to bed like soon, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, Red forty is a known allergen. Right. What time you have to get up to go to work? Four thirty. Oh, okay. And he was up late last night. No, Denise asked you about it, change of diet, Gary. Was yeah, it? I, yeah. Well, since I had COVID, I have dropped thirty-five pounds. Oh, well, Shit. that's good for you. Thirty of that's been since the heart attack. So I'm almost down to touching two hundred. Well, good for you. Yeah. That's good for you. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I needed that. I haven't seen 200 since junior high. Probably. Or did you even have a junior high? Did you have middle school? <laughs> I, had, I had middle school. Yeah. So, yeah, they didn't start middle school until the 70s, the late 70s. And so, yeah, it's, in, it, in it would have been because all of high school, I was 260 plus. So, yeah, had to be middle school that I hit 200 or elementary school. Well, he's got to stick around. You know, he's always talked about his Toyota Tundra, the 280-some thousand miles. He got a new truck. What? You did. It's he not got, new. It's, it's new not new, you. but it's new to him. Did you trade your Tundra in? No, the Highlander. Oh, okay. I, I like those. How many miles did that have on it? The Highlander? Yeah. 183. Wow. Really? The Tundra has, two, Tundra has 283. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. in good shape. I was I looking think. online today. Oh. There's all kinds of Tundras for sale with anywhere from 150 to 600,000 yep. miles. Yeah. yeah, and they're still wanting $50,000 yeah. for them. Yeah, but well, wait, until, wait until you hear what he got. What did you get? I got a Tacoma. Ah, that's what I used to have. Four door Tacoma, four wheel drive. I, I took it out and drove today, put 300 miles on it, and average. How did you go? I just take off and drive. Yeah. He's retired. I know, but 300 <laughs> miles, I mean. It's 150 five miles hours. Five hours. <laughs> yeah, but you have you have a it, mission. It it averaged 25.4. Well, that's not horrible. No. Not pretty good. But 2018, isn't it, Gary? 18. Yeah. Four door, four wheel drive, black. Metallic black. Yeah. It's got all now, the spring Tell them how many miles are on it. 40. Two now. Oh wow. Okay. Low mileage. That is low. That is. Yeah. yeah. I got my 2018 Chevy with nine thousand on it. My two hundred my twenty seventeen Hyundai Elantra has a hundred and one thousand one hundred and forty miles on it. That's bad that I know the exact number. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I am at like thirty five right now. It's because mine you got went thirty-five thousand on your truck. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a low mileage, Jesus. Yeah, and I've had it for my work two, two, three years now. What year is it? Eighteen. My work car I just got a little over a year ago has got ninety thousand on it. God, if you went to trade that in right now and sell it, you'd get more money than what you paid for it. Again, uh, that Land Rover yeah. will last forever as long as you take care of it. Those things are built to last. They're, yeah. They don't build cars like that anymore. But, I mean, you spend yeah. $50,000 on your Tesla, you got to go get it charged up every five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you got to <laughs> plug in your USB cord. And now well, they're that's just what throwing... they're going to do with them electric Ford trucks. You're now they're just throwing them up the... so you can run your whole house. Yeah, now they're just throwing the Teslas away yeah. because it's too expensive to replace the battery. There, and there's no so... place to dispose of the batteries in so... the United States. Yeah, you have so to just, now all these Teslas are just sitting in landfills mm -hmm. everywhere. And mm -hmm. guy called up, says like twenty eight thousand to get it, get them replaced. Yeah. 
Sweet. Oh, it was you, great. You, I didn't get a new vehicle for that. Right. My car, well, $17,000. It's like, well, I guess you think about it, that pretty much is the car. But yeah. guess, where, guess where I went to get this to come up? Where? Topeka. Oh. Oh. Well, there you go. That's that's a good drive. Especially when it was priced three thousand below anything else online. That's amazing. That's really good. Yeah. Wish we could have found something. Well, he and he got more money for his uh, Highlander when the guy finally seen it and said, "Oh, oh yeah, I look. It you, looks no, because that was the top part, of the right? line with all the goodies." Yeah. On it. Yeah, that thing's is in great shape. Right. That was your wife's car, right? That was yeah. what she drove. Yeah, I don't need two now. No. No, you no, don't need two. But he's got two trucks. But again, he's got his driving truck well, and he's got his work truck. Yeah. I, you want you want some of a better gas mileage if you're just tooling around. Yeah. And you want something bigger if you gotta move shit. Yeah, so I, 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 I like not moving much. I like my, uh, yeah, you need to not be doing that much moving. I stuff. like my Tacoma, but when we moved into the new house, I was using it all the time to rehab and redo our old house. We moved over here, oh. moved in a new house. I was like, I don't, I don't mm. need to. Talk. All right. So I, if, if anybody's listening, we still have five pews to give away. Yeah. Well, you know what? If there's a bad ice storm, you may be able to give them away pretty quick. Yeah, firewood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let me come get that firewood. I mean, pew real quick. Hopefully it doesn't oh. <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> Luke paid 100 pounds for his Land Rover when he was 17, and he still has it now. Right. He's had that thing for quite a while. Well, what, yeah. what they're not getting on the Teslas is you still need electricity, so you still need coal to create electricity. Yeah. Or Unless water you want to go nuclear, which there's a whole lot not. about nuclear. Coal power. fire powered cars. That's what I call them. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the Ford car, the Ford trucks won't be 100% electric. No. They'll be like the Prius. Yeah. Piece of well, <laughs> no, I mean, as far as the charging okay. up those. Hold on, jackass. It'll be gas powered and it charges itself with the, the gas. So Gunny is acting like he wants to go to the bathroom and I am tired of yawning on camera. So I'm going to call for a night. Okay. Cameron. Good night. I'm, I'm, Get some rest. Yeah. Y'all have a good night. Yep. Night. Sleep Later, well. Camera. Oh, I'm going to try. Well. Good seeing you're doing better. I'm doing much better. Okay. Yeah, Cameron's been wore out the hours he's been putting in and he he just got over the flu bug too. Stomach bug like yeah. I did. You passing it through the do we have virus vision now? Yep, we must have. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we've we've had a whole bunch of people sick at work and I think uh, a few weeks ago, whatever I had that caused me to have a horrible headache and just knocked me out for a while. It was a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I told you guys I was not feeling well, but right. I was fine by the time the show came. It's just before that I was so sick. I just didn't know what in the hell was going on. What's strange is that uh, about two days later, Leah had the same symptoms. So I could have had something that was viral. Well, uh, Christine had stomach flu, then I got it, and I don't know who else is going to come down with it. Well, hopefully none of the kids. No, well, we haven't been babysitting too many kids lately. Oh, is that good or bad? Or that's good, bad How's in one bad in one way, but good in the other. How's Tammy feeling? Tammy's doing pretty good. How's her arms or it's, her arm? It's doing amazingly well. Good. I'm really shocked. But uh, no, we haven't seen uh, Luke or Haven for quite a while. Mommy's staying home with them now. And, uh, but we are watching a two month old. Oh, well, they're easier. Two days a week. Oh, well. <laughs> 
my little nine month old granddaughter is now running everywhere. Oh, She's yeah. been walking for a month. How many eight month old babies do you know walk? And, and it's not furniture walking. It's all the way across the apartment. It's chasing me down the hallway. Oh. If I, if I turn around and, you know, make an about face and go the other direction, she is chasing me wherever she, I go. She will yeah. make you lose weight. I think the kids have already done that. I mean, I spend a lot of time just stressing out about not being with them when they really need me. Do you but, still have as many migraines as you used to have? Uh, it depends, but I started, a, I take you Brelvi now when I have one, I don't take preventative. Um, so Honestly, I had a whole bunch during um, the holidays and stuff. I think I've had three bad ones since the first of the year. So not as bad as I. Yeah. So it's not it's not a, acute now. Right. So holiday time is stressful time. Yeah, I don't know what what it was. Maybe it was the weather because I do tend to get uh, really horrible sinus issues and end up with migraines or I sleep weird. I have a hole in my spine and my neck. So I have something called, I have spina bifida occulta is what it's called. And so I have a hole in my spine and it's in my neck. And if my neck starts hurting, I can almost guarantee within a few hours, I'm going to have a horrible head migraine. Hmm. So yeah. I have to be really careful on uh, what I sleep on. So, like, uh, I can't sleep on a really flat pillow. I have to have something with support. Mm -hmm. So, um, I keep seeing these advertisements for this uh, C-E-L-F. Yeah, C-E-L-F-L-E-Y. It's a thing that you put on your head. And it's not medication at all, but it's some kind of uh, electronic thing that's supposed to help reduce your migraines you right. can use it as a preventative or you can use it as a migraine and i'm thinking about checking that out to see how that works because it i would much rather not take medication so she said she's cold i am cold my feet are cold so um yeah botox is supposed to be good too but you know mm, i don't know about that it botulism. that's all right luke we just got about a half hour left uh but catches friday night luke i think uh cameron wants you on the show on the second amendment rant. yeah botox is actually botulism i believe that they shoot you up full no the plague yeah they shoot you up full of the plague yeah and i just can't do that i i mean if i'm not yeah. taking not if really. i'm not taking a a vaccine for with unknown substances in it. I'm not taking Botox where I know what's in it. I just can't do that. And so, and now a friend of mine did take that. He had chronic migraines. Bad part is, is he recently had, he had a stroke last year and I don't know if it's from the Botox and he's younger than I am. And we always talk about the latest and greatest inventions for migraine medication and, and all that. But I'll tell you, Topamax does not work well for me. It works good for some other people. I got I got a pillow on my pillow and I don't care for it. Ron likes his. So the cat peed on mine, so I really don't like it. <laughs> it's in the Send I, it back. I haven't been able to to uh I haven't been able to wash it because I need to have two to wash. To, to balance the wash machine. Topamax, T O P A M A X. Dopamax. <laughs> it might be Dopamax. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I I was taking that. I just didn't like the way it made me feel. So work out. So but yeah, one of the other things is uh body armor can help. You know, sometimes dehydration causes um migraines. Sometimes so, sorry to say this, but Something with a lot of caffeine in it will help. 
uh, when I was real- <laughs> dope. <laughs> so, oh well, I could see that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's there's all kinds of different things out there. I've tried Imatrex. Can't take that anymore because of uh, my sister has a heart condition, and the doctor told me it can kill me, so I can't take that. Ooh. And I know it sounds strange. My sister has a heart Ooh. condition. But because it's it's one of those things that could be hereditary mm-hmm. that they don't know about. Mm-hmm. And I have a heart condition and I don't think it, I don't know if it's the same. It's not the same heart condition my sister has. So I don't know. And then uh, Verapamil, it's supposed to lower your blood pressure. It lowered my blood pressure pretty damn good, but it also caused other problems that I couldn't deal with. I mean, I was passed out on the bathroom floor with lots and lots of pain. And they go, oh, we don't know what that is. I said, the only thing I'm taking is this. That's the only thing that's changed. Apparently, it has uh, caused a severe constipation. It's one of those rare side effects if you're allergic to it. So Leave it to you to have the rare one, though. That's the thing. I always have the rare problem. So, like, uh, next week... I'm going to have a CT scan of my chest. Um, Between my lungs, I have some kind of inflammation. They don't know what it is. And it could be anything as as mild as an infection to cancer. Right. As you can see, I'm really worried. (laughs) I mean, if they told me about this back in October and they didn't move to do anything until... Yeah, I know when they... When They've really getting more fast on these. And I says that back in October. Back yeah, we're going in February. I went. No, they told me six months. Yeah, I know, but yeah. six. I thought. And I had that, went to the doctor, and I fought with the must doctor. Not be an emergency. And man. the doctor, well, when he found out I wasn't getting vaccinated, got a little cocky with me. But, um, but no, he hit him and the. Uh, the radiologist and the pulmonologist all came together and decided it would be three months instead of six. Yeah, I, I was real thankful when I was in the emergency room. Doctor come in and said, you're not leaving this place. Oh. <laughs> I, think you, I think you'd figure that out by then, right? <laughs> yeah. Did, you, did they put you on any cholesterol medicine or anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What did they put you on? Lipitor? Oh, I can't name them other than estrogen. Oh, okay. So You see that advertised on all the time? Oh, yeah. So did they I, put you on? I know they- why they advertise it so much. One month supply is 700 bucks. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. going to say, it's money. So did they put you on, on Prevostatin or did they put you on Lipitor? For your cholesterol medicine. Neither one of those. Hmm. Well, I mean, those are the. Those Chlora, are the... Some, Chlora something. Oh. Are you having any side effects with it? No. Okay. Other than, and I'm going to ask, and I go in the end of February. I do have trouble sleeping. Going to sleep. Are you ta- When are you taking your cholesterol medicine? <coughs> I take it in the morning after breakfast and before I go to bed. Are you sure that's cholesterol medicine and not uh, blood pressure medicine? Well, that may be blood pressure. Okay, because cholesterol medicine you should take before you go to bed. Yeah. Yours being a pharmacist. That's the blood blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, since you've had your uh, triple bypass and all that. Have you been up to see your doctor in Albany? Your chiropractor. I didn't, I didn't have a triple bypass. Well, your stents. My yeah. stents. Yeah, I, I had the heart attack October nineteenth. I was back in the middle of November and saw the doctor, and that's when they released me to do. Whatever no, I wanted no, no. to do. I'm talking about your chiropractor. Oh, yeah. I went up and got my back straightened out two weeks ago. 
he checked my blood pressure. He said, that's great. Good, good. Good, so, I'm glad to hear that. One one thing I do notice, so I know what Carl's talking about on cold hands since I had the heart attack. Yeah. They freeze. Oh, yep. yeah. So it means that your is does that mean that your blood's not flowing as much or that it's flowing less or yeah, it's flowing less or more? What was that again? It was that before. W were your hands cold before? No. So no, does Carl, that mean that Carl knows I had hot hands. <laughs> yeah. Oh, before. Yeah. yeah. So is that because your blood is not flowing as much or it's flowing too much? Flowing too much, I guess. So it's thinner. Blood. I don't know. Huh. Are, you, are, you, are you taking blood thinners too? One of the pills is a thinner. Okay. That's why. That is why. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it does that, is that warfarin? Well, maybe I ought to take a blood thickener and my hands would warm up. Drink, some, <laughs> drink, drink some cornstarch. <laughs> Or, or move to a warmer place. I, I have known for quite some time they don't call warfare and warfare anymore. Oh. Or very seldom. They put a big long name on it. Oh. Well. I'll go get my pills. I, I just know that there's arsenic in some of them. He's doing pretty good. He is he doing excellent. He's been through. And, he even uh, sounds good. He does. He does. Uh, yeah, Chad lives in Jacksonville. It's been a it's been a strain on him and the girls and everything coming up there, going through all the mom stuff and it takes finding out more and more. Yeah, that's okay. Just leave the door open and let people steal it. That's what my sister did. Yeah. Well, that's after she got everything she wanted. Yeah. Make sure all my stuff got stolen. I feel good. I only have four. That's good. Yeah, he's only got four pills. Especially plus, at your age. Plus the baby Ashburn. Yep. Yeah, Chad, I know what you mean. We're going to be testing him now. Curva, though. Hmm? What's that for? Which it doesn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> this says when to take it. Yeah. Just take it. It's good Just for you. Take it. It's good. Take for my you. mouth. Take my mouth twice daily. Yeah. That's a little. That's a little white pill, same size as the aspirin. Okay. Maybe aspirin. And I'll spell this one C L O P I D O G R E L. <laughs> Okay. Cool look looking. Oh, none, yeah. none of them tell me what they're for. <laughs> wow. Yeah, neither does mine. We give you these pills, you just take them. That's right. It, it's a small pink pill. Well, at least they're different colors. That's how he knows which ones to take. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Might be helpful with the spec click. Oh boy. A T O P V A S T A T I N. That that is your I, I hate to say that that's Lipitor. That is your cholesterol medicine. You need to be taking that at night. Right. It can cause leg cramping and other things. Um, if you start getting leg cramps, contact your doctor. You start getting yeah. nosebleeds, contact your doctor. And uh, the statin, the statin part is what told me. That's Lipitor. That's the bigot. Yep. And that's one pill daily. Yeah, and like I said, that Man, that you should is, take it. That's a, a big one. For good size. Yeah, we're. We take the same cholesterol, but it's just a little bitty pill at night. And then this one's in Tristo. Oh, okay. 
That's your blood thinner, right? Yeah. Take it twice daily. After I eat in the morning and before bedtime. Before this, that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, I felt good that I only got four. Yeah. So. It's not too bad. No. I mean, you almost died. You could have been pushing up daisies. Instead, you're just taking some medication. and Just, just think of all the fun I could have had with you guys. Oh, yeah. He'd been talking through the echo box like crazy. <laughs> I would much rather have yeah, him. We here. can talk to him live. I, I, I want to talk to him live. I don't want yeah. to talk to him through the echo box, but yeah, that's what we joked around about and everything. You got to joke around about it. Yeah. And just live life and, and see have what's fun. going on. That's right. Have fun. I mean, that's well, what. Just, just like Doctor said, I had angels carrying me into the house. Yeah. He told, he told my two daughters and myself that. So, well, we're grateful. That I was so uh, <clears throat> about two or three weeks ago. I was in El Dorado Springs at, at a wood supermarket, and it's right off the it's right on the highway there. And my machine is right by the front door, and I'm just sitting there working on my machine. I had to load some software up. So I had my back to the road, and all of a sudden I heard, bam, I mean a loud noise, and I heard this lady had just walked in the store, she goes, oh my God, and I, well, I, I turned around in time to see a car flipping in the parking lot, mm. I mean, just craps flying out everywhere, I mean, it clothes and i i didn't know i was seeing bodies coming out i didn't know what was going on it finally came to a stop it landed on its wheels and then it kind of rolled down the little parking lot hill and came to a stop it had hit a the telephone pole which was a, a big well electric pole which was off the road quite a ways dry road sunny i i have no idea what what happened or why they hit it, but when the pole, it took it down enough to where a uh, eighteen wheeler caught the power line and got hung up. So it, it was a mess. But yeah, the, the person lived. But man, they must have had angels sitting by them because you know when you turn around and see a car just rolling in the parking lot after hitting a pole. On concrete, I mean, yeah. it smacked it. Yep. My mom, she said that she felt like that she had been plucked out of her car and put back in it. Like she was watching it from above. She got uh, an 18-wheeler came across the median on Interstate 81 mm -hmm. by Blacksburg, Virginia, and hit her dead on. Knocked her car into a loop. She was not hurt at all. My mom had osteoporosis. So, you know, it should have broke a few bones. She didn't have a bruise on her. She says, I don't know if it was Ansel or my mother hmm. that, that pulled her out of the car and then put her back in. Yeah. So what she's seen, she's I, seen to think that's what happened. I see Chad in, in the chat room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No knows about how many pages of instructions you get when you get your pills. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A whole shitload. Yeah, that's the technical term for it too. Shitload. That's See, this is right. all no, new for me. I never had prescriptions before in right. my life. So, yep, that's why you don't know what they are. I mean, the doctor put me on Lipitor. What was it? 10, 10 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, you couldn't. I couldn't even get out of bed. Yeah, and, I, and was, it was only like day two. She was. And no, it looks like a pharmacy when Tammy totally sits right. down at the table and figures her pills out. When who? My God. When oh. Tammy does. Oh. Yeah. I mean, she takes, what, 12 of them in the morning and 14 of them at night? Wow. Why? Well, I, I, I take a lot of stuff, but it's... It's, it's supplements. Different, yeah, different supplements. But one I counteracts the other one, counteracts this one, counteracts that one, and I'm like... Then why take quit it? Quit taking one of them. It yeah. eliminate seven. Or you, you know. start taking the ones that, that knock out the other one. 
why take one if this one's going to go negate it? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I take one prescription. That's it. Oh, I know. Uh, we checked into the uh, uh, medical marijuana and stuff and showed the doctor and stuff. Out of those 12 in the morning, it would cut her down to four pills. And in the evening, cut her down to four pills by chewing uh, a half of one of these gummy bears a day of the medical oh. marijuana. Oh. And I'm like, well, hell yeah, I do that. Only problem is her insurance doesn't pay for it. Right. And they're pricey. But, hello, uh, Ruth. And hello, Spirits Within. Yeah. So In the UK, we got a lot of them. <laughs> hello, well, maybe, UK. Maybe we should talk paranormal instead of medication. <laughs> yeah, we should. It is a paranormal I, I radio many, show. I do wonder how many people think they're seeing spirits that are drug induced you know i kind of wonder if you know because we know that we deal with some people in the paranormal that think they have spirits in their house and come to find out later on they have um medical issues that are causing that right uh whether it's mental or you know, mentally they're they're seeing stuff because they have mental illness, or they're on medication for something that's causing hallucinations. Well, you know, as a pastor, there's a lot of pastors that do not think that any pastor should be involved in the paranormal. But right. The, but the thing is, is there are 30, a lot of ministers. 35% of the healing that the Lord Jesus Christ did was casting out spirits. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there were spirits back then, there are sure going to be spirits today. That's oh, right. yeah. In fact, there's bound to be more. Well, oh, yeah, a lot more. So thinking about that, about how many spirits, I wonder if anybody back then ever saw spirits of dinosaurs. Because and, and is there do we have an expiration date on on when we we stop being seen as spirits? Yeah, you know? I just finished I just finished doing the book of Job on Bible studies. Uh -huh. And Job's the book where he uses about two to three chapters talking about the behemoth and the leviathan. Yeah. The behemoth was the dinosaur on land. The leviathan was some kind of big fish, which may have been the giant shark that is Meg now extinct. Megalodon? Yeah, the yeah. Megadon. Megadon. Yeah, the leviathan story is... Now. Yeah, the Leviathan, well, they think it's extinct. They don't know for sure um, because yeah, they're finding they're sure. lots of teeth on the Megalodon. But, yeah, the Leviathan story is just <laughs> Carl's amazing. Carl's got that look like, I'm not going in the ocean again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go in it to begin with. And, and Chad, I, I know that there are people who have seen well, stuff that's you, witnessed by other people. I'm if not we saying move, you will all... have to come on my boat, right? Yeah, we'll oh, I, will. Right. I will. I will. With a life jacket, I guess. Yep. Oh, and, and the key thing there, don't put shrimp in your pockets. No. Nah. Don't keep bait in your pockets when you go fishing. Why? Because you become bait. Oh. <laughs> so, so long story short, we went to Galveston one time. And while uh -huh. we were there, uh -huh. there were some kids out fishing on Bolivar Island. They got attacked by a... A bull shark. I know, I know. That was in Florida. That happened in uh, Bolivar Island, too. These kids were out there fishing, and they got attacked by a bull shark because they had bait in their yeah, pockets. Yeah, it was, it was uh, in the Navarre, Navarre Beach. Not, was, not Navarre. Uh, I ain't carrying bait in my yeah, pockets. Yeah, it was like two weeks apart. Yeah. That's why you have yeah. these things you carry to have bait in them. Right. Yeah, well, they're standing or, in the water fishing. For and, a bull shark, you don't even have to have the bait. No. No. Like he, no. He will. In... Uh, 
They're, yeah, okay. I guess they're getting more aggressive. All oh, the time. we got a new one. Spirits within. Yeah. Most so, of the mentally ill over in the UK in asylums used to get experiment on due to seeing spirit and claims to communicate with them. That used to happen uh, here in the United States. You know, because they thought we were crazy. That was one of yeah. the things that would get yeah. you put into an a, a, an <laughs> asylum. I was going to say nut house, but right. asylum faster than anything else is saying, hey, you see this. I mean, just think about it. Men were putting their women in asylums back in just in the 1950s for speaking right. out against their husbands. Sure. It didn't take much to get to be put in an asylum back in those yeah, days. Right. No. A long time ago. Well, it, it is take no time at all. It's true. I think number start. two in St. Joe's used to stay pretty full. Yep. Also, witches yeah, uh, and those who were accused to be a witch used to get killed in brutal ways. So many got right. killed for just being accused. Yep. Well, we yeah, had that, that happen in Salem. We had that in Salem. Yeah. We had that not only in Salem, but Salem is the one that gets all the history of it. It happened all over the the United you know the United States in the 1600s. What yeah. little bit of the United States was right out there on the East Coast, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in the 1800s, it happened again mm -hmm. during you know right before I, the spiritualism movement movement started. I fully believe that a lot of the people that are diagnosed with schizophrenia and the mental illnesses. Are dealing with spirits it right. could be that it, it could, could also be. be that they're poisoned by their i'm gonna say it and you're gonna get mad at me could be poisoned by the vaccines they got as children i mean yep. think about it um you know one of the things that i was telling ron i said you know i had measles twice twice and this was after the vaccine was created they created the vaccine in two years. Okay. So that was the fastest they'd ever created a vaccine was for MMR. Okay. Back then. And they created that in 1963. They, and so in 1966, I got it and I ended up with measles twice. Okay. Does that sound familiar to what's going on now? People are still getting these diseases, this, you know, coronavirus with a virus or with a, vaccine that doesn't do what it's told are you to starting do. to get busy carl uh no i had to check on some deliveries that they made and, everything. <laughs> and yeah chad i am at the restaurant and stuff so but been a good day it, it seemed like it's been dead but several hundreds went through the register today so that's i used to have used I, to have a family in a church that absolutely refused to get any any of their children shots, mm -hmm. but they would find out who had children that were sick, let's say with measles or mm -hmm. mumps or whatever, and they would beg to get their children in so they could get exposed, so they could have it and be immune to it. Yeah. Well, that's how we used to have... Uh... Chicken pox parties. Yeah. Right back in the day. Three of my four kids had chicken pox, and then the kids that yeah, I was babysitting I got them. I think I got it. Mm. I had chicken I had pox. To, I got to give it to my brother. Yeah. My two yeah. older my two older sisters had the mumps. So my mom put me in the room yeah. with them so I'd get it and I didn't yep. get it. Yeah. I wouldn't run if I hear somebody has the mumps. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Ron had whooping cough and you know our three of our children had had the shots for whooping cough pertussis is what it's called yeah but Leah yeah. wasn't old enough but yet. Leah was only a month old so when Ron, when Ron had whooping cough when she was born I didn't I didn't know didn't I know. had it we, they, he I was just told, thought they just told me I had bronchitis yeah they had put him on antibiotics and told me he had bronchitis and then he ended up with polyps on his throat because of coughing and yeah. stuff I was coughing so hard and one time I I coughed so much I passed out. I caught him. I mean, he was lucky I was standing right there. He to hit his head on the kitchen counter at your mom's. It was pointy. But yeah. um, but yeah, they they all had the you know, the kids had the pertussis shot. Leah couldn't have it, she was a month old. 
I hadn't had an updated shot and I was with both Ron and Leah when, you know, the whole time he was sick, I was pregnant. And then Leah was little. I did not get pertussis when <laughs> the baby did. So needless to say, yeah, poop is a cure. Um, but yeah, needless to say, I didn't get it. I don't feel like I need another shot for, I don't think I need a Tdap shot anymore mm -hmm. because I was exposed to it twice and didn't get it. So apparently I'm healthy enough to fight something off. Yeah. When Leah survived the whooping cough, you know, the, the doctor said, whatever you do, don't. do not get her vaccinated for it. Cause that could hurt her. Yeah. And I right. still remember saying, I was like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. She's got all the antibodies now. Yes. Well, you know, she was, uh, we had COVID way doctor. before. They well, knew what it was. It was you had COVID before, before COVID. <laughs> before it was. COVID. Yeah. It was, yeah. It's December of 2019. And then what? Two months later, then we started <laughs> hearing stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. Don't use poop. Well, we're term. winding down to our two hours. So it doesn't seem like it. So. I know. In so everybody life. listening, thank yeah. you for joining us. Denise, tell everybody where they can find your show and who you got coming on next week. So we my show is on hey, WB WBHM-DB.com every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central. And it's not video, it's audio only. And my next show is uh TV mediums versus uh, mediums in reality. My guests are going to be Vanessa Hogel, the effing medium, uh, Kat Gash. She is an author and recently out of the closet medium. And, uh, and Chuck Banks, who did write the book, know, The Chuck. Closet Medium. So needless to say, it's going to be a lively show. I may not even get to speak. And so might, that except, might be it. Except the butt in to say commercial time, people. So yep. it will they be. May, they may not stop talking. Yeah, they may not stop. <laughs> so, um, but it's going to be good. And, yeah, it'll uh, be a good one. So we're going to be talking about the differences between what we see on TV and what actually is is occurring with mediums when they when they see stuff. So right. it will be interesting to say the least, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So please check us out on wbhm-db.com and come back here every Tuesday night to see us and. If you have a topic you want us to cover on either show, let us know. Right. So, Just send a message in there, whatever. And but you also talked check a little out. bit about Bigfoot last night. Yes. Yeah. I, I, didn't, be I didn't get to share the last time I was at the cemetery. I heard a tree knock down Did there. You? Finally. He's finally answering back he after all. Finally answered your tree knock. <laughs> wow. He was on anyway, hold all that time. Like. Hey, maybe he's a Bigfoot with dementia. <laughs> <laughs> no, sweet. we need to get we need to get up there, or at least go out to the graveyard, or yeah, we will this spring. Do something. Get warmed up a little bit. Yeah, I got to get a tree cut down so it doesn't. Fall on your car where you park. Oh, that yeah. might be handy. Right. Yeah, Chad, I can tell you that if you want to, if you really want to know. But I, we don't have time to do it tonight. No. So anyway, check out the Bill of Rights no. Network where we have all the rest of our shows over there. Check out Things Network where we're being shown at tonight too. They have a whole list of paranormal shows over on that. <laughs> oh man. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I want to thank Denise and Ron. I want to thank Pastor Gary for coming on. Uh, another show coming on right after us. So join us next Tuesday night at 5 o'clock for Paranormal Nation Radio. Not so normal.